the slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you hide behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through hell I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement This build is with Pulse and the most important thing is to activate the Pulse properly The Pulse is activated when you get these two symbols In addition you must be at 6 or less ammo and only then can you do big damage. I will also play it in slow motion so you can see what I was talking about. When you have 6 or less ammo, activate the pulse in this way, then dodging and turn on the lantern and at the end the tempest can do a lot of damage. In this example it goes up to 30,000 and if you don't do everything right, then the damage is around 8,000 as in this last example when the pulse is not activated properly. Now I'm moving on to the main build and I will try to provide you with as much information as possible that will help you really master this build and once again watch the video to the end so you don't miss an important tip. I would also ask that if you like what I'm doing, leave a like or a comment, it would mean a lot to me and help this channel, thank you. Briefly about how much damage this build can do. Well, I tested it in Frost Escalation before and I made about 500k damage, for the last few months I only tested it in Shock Escalation and the most damage I could see was 636,000 damage, because with Tempest, many times I don't see the damage I did because of the speed. Basically, as you can see in the Weapon Tracker, the biggest hit is 151,300, which means basic damage. Let's start with the Impulse Cell. You can buy this in the gauntlet shop this season and you need 8 pieces. You need to join a guild and it is enough for the guild to complete 35 levels and you will have 8 coins and you will be able to buy 8 impulse cells. In case you don't have a guild and you can't get to impulse cells at all, then you only have to wait for this season for to end. From season 5, you can get all these cells from previous seasons normally when opening cores. In the same way, you can get cell drop which was in season 1. Until then you can use Crazy Tempest build version 1 without impulse. Open your cores and you will get, in addition to cells, a lot of rams and ether dust that you need at the middleman to speed up cell exchange up to plus 3. Complete guide for escalation we start with 6 or less ammo to get buff from weapon mod lightweight frame with 20% move speed. The second step is to do a few dodges to drop your stamina below 30% and allow cell drop to keep you at 25% or less until the end. After this you are ready for escalation and my advice is don't use the weapon until the end. First you will definitely have the buff turned on until the end otherwise you will have to look left every second in the buff bar to see if you are on 6 ammo and believe me in 90% of cases you will get hit, not every dodge will succeed, etc. Many times the question in the comments is why drop plus 6. 
First, plus 4 is enough to have minus 50% stamina and a buff from invigorated cells that gives you 50% move speed. But plus 4 requires 2 cells, so that's why it's better plus 6, because there are 2 cells in any case. The problem with repeaters is that when you draw your pistols, you can't sprint and the stamina regenerates quickly during that time. All other weapons can be below 50% stamina without a drop, but for repeaters is an impossible mission. I tried several times without drop and believe me, for one escalation I needed to do over 100 plus dodges and I didn't always manage to be on low stamina. Your brain just explodes if you have to play every escalation like that. One of the important amps is Thunderous Mantle which gives huge speed and 1000 damage in next 3 seconds. Since repeaters can't sprint and if you take this amp, it's simply impossible to be on low stamina because the amp also gives a buff so that while sprinting it doesn't use stamina and at the same time, it regenerates quickly. Summary at the end of this part. 6 ammo. Dodge till 25% stamina. Go to Behemoth. Dodge. Turn on the lanterns and then go Tempest and boom. From here until the end, all you have to do is try to do as many dodge attacks as possible. You don't care about the rest, like for example weapon damage. Just concentrate on doing dodge attacks and even one Tempest attack can kill the behemoth. Now we come to guide about dodge to get as many as possible Tempest stucks. When you master this you will have constant Tempest stucks and the ability for big hits. You can dodge almost anything to get Tempest Stucks. Behemoth's Attack. Creature Attack. Fireballs from Cherub. Electric and Umbral Balls from Shock and Umbral Behemoths. Tornado from Bird's Attack etc. I'll show you some examples of all this. Almost everything can be dodged in game, some are easy to do, some are a little more difficult, but with time you will learn everything. In audio. Now I will show you a small tutorial for some behemoths that you will often encounter in escalation. These are small tricks that will help you a lot during escalation and most players don't even know about this. Malkarian. When he turns 360 degrees while in the air, sprint towards the tail and do a dodge there and you will get Tempest stuck. Sprint again and use Tempest. 99% is that Malkarian will do the same move again. You repeat the same moves and after a few repetitions he's down. Don't rush like many players do with Malkarian. Wait from a short distance for him to move towards you, do a dodge, turn on the lantern and sprint to the tail and use Tempest. He can be killed after 1, 2, or 3 hits. One short tip for Malkarian, never ride him because during that time while riding, in addition to doing less damage and slower than when you are on the ground, at the same time Malkarian does some other moves that will only take away your time in escalation. Savit, you will find him in almost every shock escalation. He is easy to kill but unfortunately many players have problems with him. Here is an example of how to dodge and when. When you learn and have the right timing for dodge, everything will be easy. Grieve. With him, as with almost all other behemoths, you can repeat his same move. At the moment when he turns red and goes into the ether phase, you can do a dodge and a tempest break part and that way you will stop the transition to ether phase and he will repeat that same move every time you break the phase with a part break.
Phalanx, same as Screeve and example at the end if you miss and don't do a part break, then every behemoth will change their move. Strike. Also an example of him repeating the same move. Why is this important? Well, during the time he does this move, you don't get any damage and the other members of the group deal constant damage to the behemoth. Every repetition means the same thing, nobody gets any damage and the behemoth is killed. Mezaga. One of the easiest behemoth that you can kill quickly and also make it repeat the same move. Kos High. Not always but you can make him repeat the same move. They will repeat the same move every time you do a part break until you kill them or miss and not do a part break, then they change their attack move. A small tip for Tempest Stucks, maybe some players don't know, Stucks are active for 45 seconds. If you don't use them they disappear after 45 seconds. If you have more Stucks, simply use one Stuck if for example you are not next to Behemoths. You will lose one stuck but the others will be active again for 45 seconds as in this example. Alira. If you don't rush at the beginning and stay at a distance, Alira will make a spin attack that can be avoided and you can immediately use Tempest, the transition to Aether phase can also be avoided. See in this example how to play against Alira and easily make a dodge. Nasha. An example when you can do a dodge and get a lot of Tempest Stucks. Best Amps Here you can see a list of the best amps you should get. I tried to rank them by value and put numbers from 1 to 4. Of course number 1. Virulent Impact is the strongest amp but unfortunately it's very rare to get. Number 2. Our Mantle and Precision. Mantle gives you huge speed which is very important for this build while Precision gives after 17 seconds 100% critical chance. Amps 3 are also very important if you can get them and finally number 4 if you didn't get any of the previous ones. All the other amps are irrelevant. These are the best amps for Frost Escalation, here if you have some similar amps as in Shock Escalation they belong in this list too.
At the end of this video, I would like to emphasize again that this build can also be used by players who don't have many hours in Dauntless, who don't have many reforges or slayers path filled. I worked most of the clips for this video with a low level account that has a total of 40 reforges, where pike reforge is 12, repeaters 8 and all other weapons are level 1 to 3. The slayer's path is quite poorly filled and yet with this build I managed to work up to 250k without problems. I will leave in the video description links for all important videos and everything which is related to this build and all meta builds. I want to express my deepest gratitude to all of you, incredible viewers. Your support and engagement mean the world to me. Each like, comment, and share has motivated me to create meaningful content. I read every message and appreciate your feedback. Keep pursuing your dreams, and please continue sharing your thoughts with me. Thank you for being a part of my journey. I am honored and grateful to have you here.